All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, we got our first look today on the new character Umbaku, the three new uniforms, Shuri, Namor, and Riri Williams. We're also getting a transcended skill for these two. And it seems like they're throwing in Moon Girl into the mix because I saw a devil dinosaur there in the trailer. And that's the only way that that makes sense. In addition to that, we have the patch details that we're gonna go over here. And one major thing that's coming, as you can see, it is finally time. Rage Reforging is coming with the drop of this update. I was wondering if they were gonna save this until the anniversary next year. However, it seems like now is the perfect time for them to drop it, I guess so that people can push higher scores in Alliance Battle Legend. I'm not really looking forward to it just because of the fact that with Rage being unforgeable, what I noticed was for Extreme Alliance Battle and Alliance Battle Legend, the score difference was not that big. However, when brilliant CTPs come into the mix, skill kind of gets put to the side and it's who has the most money to throw into brilliance or who get the luckiest. So I'm kind of sad that Rage Reforging is here, but I'm sure that you guys have a lot of Rages out there if you've been playing for a long time or maybe you don't let me know how you feel about it in the comment section we're also getting comic card deck added okay so that's gonna be interesting to take a look at also keep in mind there's gonna be an eight hour maintenance so expect it to run a little bit longer just in case anything happens but with that being said let's jump into it man first and foremost we have the new character umbaku and I'm kind of upset, okay? I'm kind of upset because they made my mans a paywall character. Literally every new character they've added in the past, like what, two years has been a paywall character. I guess this is the new direction. However, he is going to be available from the legendary battle. My guess is for crystals. I am kind of annoyed because they should have put him in the future pass as well. But I guess since they gave away Toxin in the future pass, they're deciding to keep Umbaku locked into the legendary battle. Hopefully you don't need to spend crystals, but my money's on them making it so you have to spend cash, money, dollars or crystals. Okay, so Lord of the Mountain, basic physical attack leadership. That kind of sucks. Applies to all allies is good, but... It should have been at least like 50 or 60. That would have been dope. We got super armor, basic defense, skill damage, bonus damage, passive, all allies. Oh, okay. I see why they made him a paywall character. Okay, so increase all basic damage dealt to super villain faction, 45% decrease. Yeah, so they made him a support type to keep his value long term. And that's why they made him a paywall character. They should have made him free to play. I'm not going to lie. Right. So they basically made him like Valkyrie, like base Valkyrie. So we got paralysis. We got stun. We got sneer and paralysis. We got immunity and attack buff. We got invincibility, damage proc, HP, and damage accumulation. Okay. So we got recovery. Got a little bit of everything in his kit. No ignore dodge. Um, no chain hit damage. But the kit looks good overall and the long-term value because of the support is nice, okay? Let's move on. So we got Namor, what are they doing? Increase coal damage? What the hell? So wait, Namor is going from no element on the base to fire damage on the Phoenix and now coal damage. <laughs> what? Um, what? Uh, okay. I, I don't like this at all. Um, I guess it makes sense, you know, water, cold but water can be hot or cold it can also be room temperature um let me know what you think about this personally i would have preferred something else but i guess this is better than the hp shield that he had before so what do we got they're changing his tier 3 skill yeah so i just checked in game all of this on the tier 3 here is exactly the same as what he had before so i don't know what they're saying they're changing i guess the cold damage is the only thing that they did right additional eight cold damage Woo! and then the 153 percent cold damage yay we'll see if that actually makes a difference hopefully the tier 3 skill is different and it's more in line with a regular proc or it fits perfectly in a rage proc since this is a cdp of rage reforging update so we got super armor 
basic defense and damage reduction so they doubled his basic defense and gave him 10 percent more damage reduction that's pretty good for the tier 2 passive they gave him 15 percent more critical damage the critical rate is the same and he still has the same 30 percent chance to increase his critical damage by 100 percent on critical attacks okay so cold damage we got sneer for alliance battle legend remove active buffs from target from the two that was not there before the sneer however was there for three seconds now it's there for five seconds we have immunity for two seconds yikes um okay we'll see how useful that is before the third skill was kind of plain now it increases his skill damage and bonus damage for seven seconds with a 17 second cooldown which is yikes okay i don't know why they didn't just put this on a passive like most characters have they gave him a seven second skill damage bonus damage bump and then it's gonna be on cooldown for 17 seconds that's yikes so we have silence and fracture so yeah he's gonna be really good i guess for combat super villain alliance battle legend since he has sneer fracture and silence is good for avx you got sneer here again multiple skills with sneer so he might actually come in really good as a tier 4 striker for characters when you need sneer fifth skill has invincibility 55 percent attack defense 70 percent 20 percent speed cold damage no ignore dodge but he's level 80 and tier 4 so i guess he doesn't really need it that much no chain hit damage no iframe ignore which means no pvp potential i skipped over the uh 20 percent heal here for some reason but he has a heal now so that's good um he looks good but we'll have to wait and see what his tier 4 looks like so shuri super armor all basic defense by 40 percent skill damage bonus damage 35 30 that's actually pretty good so for the new four star passive we get 15 percent chain hit damage which is nice then we got five percent more ignore dodge they bumped up our tier two passive from 45 percent damage to super villain to 55 percent and then the damage reduction from 35 to 40 nothing on the one silence and incapacitation on the two fracture on the three we got a damage proc here as well we got HP, 30% HP recovery, that's dope. We got 40% attack and defense, and then 10% speed, 10% critical rate. Immunity for six seconds, as opposed to the seven seconds that she had before. And then she has a barrier here, all attack buff, 40%. We got shock, we got burn, we got paralysis. Okay, so she looks good, but she's missing one thing. I just wanna make sure I didn't skip over it. There's no damage accumulation, what the hell? there's also no iframe ignore there's no counter attack um i'm just kind of confused she just looks mid <laughs> i'm not gonna lie for lack of a better word she just looks mid okay so riri um it looks like all of the paywall characters are just gonna slowly become more and more in line with being support characters because they realize that people will spend money for support characters so ignore dodge to all allies is good and then 35 percent damage to boss types is good 55 percent energy attack so that's a 10 percent increase as opposed to before she has chain hit damage and immunity to guard break which is actually really good guaranteed dodge skill damage and bonus damage nothing on the one stun and silence on the two third skill has 1.1 percent damage accumulation we got paralysis here 100 percent immunity we got a 20 percent heal 50 percent attack buff 5 percent speed 35 percent critical rate safe to say they invested a little bit more into riri than shuri um hopefully there's a black panther uniform coming for shuri because um, Shiri kind of looks mid, I'm not going to lie. Okay, so tier 3 for Shiri, we have bleed, stun, silence, penetration for everything. Okay, so they put the damage accumulation on her tier 3 at 0 0.7. Hopefully, you can get that up every other rotation. And it just more than makes up for not having it in the base kit. We'll have to wait and see. Especially since it's 0 0.7 it's really cool seeing the panther fly around that that's kind of dope i wonder if you can cancel out of that and have it keep going that would be really amazing or is she the one turning into the panther let's see no she summons the panther okay and she's in an iframe pretty much the whole time from what i can see so if that's the case and you can actually you know trigger the tier three and then go into other skills that would be really cool 
Okay, so for Namor, his tier 4 increases active buff effects by 20% for 10 seconds, increases chain hit damage by 50% when attacking. So this is why they didn't give him any chain hit in his kit. They gave him 50% chain hit here, plus 20% active buff. Oh, that's going to be nice. All of his buffs going to go up. This might actually be pretty busted. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, so yeah, this confirms what I was talking about. So um, Moon Girl is a part of the Awakened skill for Riri. So we got burn, stun, paralysis, defense down, typical stuff here, chance to penetrate, um, nothing special for Moon Girl. Uh, the bad part about Moon Girl getting the transcendence is it means next month or possibly by January, you're going to start seeing Moon Girl in story mode, which is a yikes. Let's see what it looks like. So it's just the two of them. So what I just realized is Umbaku is not even getting a transcendent skill. Oh my god, that sucks. So, that one there was a violation personally, I wouldn't have been. What the hell? You gotta be, you gotta be kidding. I just, like, I was fully expecting Umbaku to be a part of... Wow. That, that, that's just trash. So, there's no point in even getting Umbaku because tier 2 characters, you can't even use them as supports in World Boss Legend or Giant Boss Raid. You can use them in, like, ABX and World Boss Ultimate. Never mind, but you're idiots. If they don't give him tier three mid month, like, am I tripping guys? Are these guys like stupid? Why would they release a, t a tier two support character? Like you can't use him in World Boss Legend. Characters need to be tier three or higher to be used in World Boss Legend or Giant Boss Raid. If he's not gonna be, a oh my God, I'm already getting annoyed. People waited like four years for this guy to get added to the game. Okay, so you get him for free. That's good. At one star. But then after that, you need a six star mega rank up ticket and a mega tier two to get him to tier two. Then he's trapped at tier two. Right? Don't, don't freak out. Yeah, he, he's free. Right? Can be acquired only once. Okay, that's fine. You only need to acquire him once. And then you can just use tickets over however long you're playing the game for. But I'm really annoyed that they trapped him at tier 2. So a CTP of Destruction is in here. And then you get one of the advancement tickets to unlock your character's potential. Shuri Artifact is in here. And then um, Riri's Icon. And is that a random card or is that a premium card? Yeah, I knew they were going to sell him for 2500 So you get him for free at one star. And then they're going to try and finesse you for 2500 Nah, don't buy this, by the way, guys. Do not buy this. You get so many rank up tickets from so many different events that this is worthless. As long as you get him at one star, which everyone is going to be able to, then there's no need for you to buy this. Okay, if you buy this, you're an idiot. <laughs> I, I'm I'm not even joking. You're like, you're actually an idiot if you do that. Um, anyways, three stages can be played for the new legendary battle, normal mode and extreme mode each. Bonus rewards will be given. Da, 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 da. Okay, so Mbaku and I'm um, sure you're going to be fighting Talakan's Assault into the depths. Yeah, so second potential realization ticket, CTP of Destruction, which no one cares about. This should have been a CTP selector and they should start including like like mighty CTPs in here. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. So when you reforge the rage, you become enraged, <laughs> okay? Increases critical damage by 80% regardless of max limit. And then you'll be up to 280 if you have a mighty. And if you have concentration on your cards, then you'll do an amount equal to 40% of the concentration that you have or you can get this which obviously this is not going to be as good as this these procs are usually better than the flat all attack and all defense buffs and then we have the brilliant ctp of rage which bumps it up by another 50 percent so from 80 percent to 130 percent i was wondering how they were going to make rage better i don't know if this is going to be able to beat out like a brilliant destruction in world boss legend but it will be interesting to see. I know for sure this is going to make a big impact in Alliance Battle Legend. And that's kind of annoying. Okay. Wait, what? No way. A second comic card deck has been added for agents who want to prepare for various battles. The additional comic card deck can be unlocked with a thousand crystals. Additional five slots will be opened when unlocking. Okay. So if you want to have like an Alliance Conquest card set and then an 
alliance battle card set you can do that that's kind of wild okay <laughs> most people don't even have one card set fully completed yet but the omeglodons are going to be able to have two now obviously you're not going to be able to get the effects from both at the same time let me just make sure that right the equipped effect content features allows agents to set effects for each content okay the effects of card decks one and two will not be applied at the same time for each content. The same comic card cannot be equipped to both comic card decks one and two at the same time. Okay, so they set some limitations in place. I figured you wouldn't have the effects from both card sets at the same time. That would just be too broken. Cause imagine you have now 50% pierce on your cards. Like what? <laughs> that would just be wild, right? So you can have two card sets and you can switch between them as as you need to but the thing is since you cannot run the same cards in two decks it limits how good your second deck can be and i don't think most people are gonna use it because for example the guardians of the galaxy comic card this is something you would want in both of your sets because he has that 10 percent juicy max hp at the top so not having this in your second card set will limit you a little bit so if you want to run a secondary set you could do scarlet witch black widow crescent new avengers then you'll have to find something else maybe gwenpool because gwenpool has the hp there so i guess that could be like a really stack hp set for people who want to play alliance conquest it's kind of wild that they did this before allowing people to have two obelisk slots like two obelisk slots is way more practical than two comic card sets I'm gonna just say that because if you build one really good hybrid set, you don't need a secondary one. But there's more money to be made in them releasing a secondary comic card set and then you re rolling to get all blue stars or all red star with a bunch of max HP and as much attack as possible and a much defense as possible. You know what I'm saying? It makes more money to give a second card deck than to actually give us a second slot for custom gears, man. I, then Marvel, I, I'm kind of upset with you guys because you chose to do what's beneficial for you over doing what's best for players. Anyways, moving on. You can actually choose which card deck is applied for what content. This is really good. Shout out to them because this makes it so that you don't have to go back and constantly be switching from deck one to deck two. However, in a few months, timeline battle, alliance conquest, and any PvP modes you play will probably get a little bit harder when it comes to fighting specific people who just want to be toxic and have the money to build specific sets for specific pieces of content. Anyways, the hero detail stats information for each card deck can be checked. The comic card deck with a higher growth rank will be displayed in the character info. The abilities of card deck one will be applied in world events speaking of world events when the hell are you guys gonna give us autoplay for world event you know what i'm saying like what's going on there ignore targets dodge by 20 percent increase basic attacks by 15 percent mid not nah, ignore dodge is okay but him trapped the tier two dumbest move ever anyways moving on oh namor is actually pretty good it increases basic damage dealt to boss type by 25 percent that that's really good okay so shuri 25 percent ignore dodge and 20 percent all attack so basically a slightly stronger version than what they gave to umbaku kind of feels lazy not gonna lie increases basic damage dealt to enemies with 50 percent hp or higher by 25 percent okay and then ignore dodge by 25%, increase damage dealt to super villains by 20%. Okay. And the future pass has a icon for mystique and human torch. You know what this means, boys? Um, in the next six months, mystique is probably gonna get tier four and we're probably gonna see something for human torch. Okay, same way how black bolt got something a couple months after he appeared in the future pass that's probably what this means i'm probably gonna pick up mystique on my free to play account let me see mystique Ooh, the kiss of death <laughs> yo namor actually looks kind of badass i'm not gonna lie more than likely this is gonna be in the event shop that requires you to um spend your tokens the tokens that you usually spend on premium cards or cdps because this one just looks so good but uh mystique oh my god <laughs> mystique looks so sweet i'm definitely getting that okay so what's going on here dimension rift has been improved so that the remaining time and progress status can be checked during the battle 
Oh, where is that? Oh, it's over here. Oh, that's dope. Oh, it's right here too. That's that's nice. That's nice. Okay. A filter to show only heroes that can be acquired or upgraded when using character selectors has been added. Okay, cool. That's nice. Some items with purchase limit can be purchased continuously with the purchase again button. Okay. The artifact auto dismantle feature has been improved not to show dismantle cost and the amount of gold process UI when set to off. Okay. The agent welcome back training missions for returning agents has been added. The check-in reward UI has been improved and the new return returning agent special check-in has been added the playtime of alliance battle normal has been changed before it was 10 minutes now it's five minutes that's perfect it should just be dropped down to three minutes frankly like if you can't beat normal then um i don't know you're probably not playing the game moving on marvel universe has been improved to display new label for newly added items that's cool the looks of thor jane foster marvel studios thor love and thunder has been improved okay um it looks really good already but they improved it all right Text has been added to tier 4 striker skill of Venom for a better understanding. You guys should have moved where the tier 4 striker skill pops up when you press it so people can see their goddamn procs. That's what you should do. Anyway, so game fixes. The issue of the final damage increase effect of the tier 4 striker skill being applied higher than intended has been fixed. Target hero Hulk. So the Hulk nerf is here. We're going to have to wait and see if he still remains as the de facto best character in the game after this hopefully he's still damn close next the skill effects of the tier 4 striker skill of black bolt has been increased not to be affected by the game error fix number one before increases all basic attack by 30 percent for 10 seconds increase final damage by 50 percent 10 second duration after it increases the all attack by 40 percent for 10 seconds and the final damage by 70 percent for 10 seconds okay we'll have to wait and see just how much stronger black Bolt becomes with this new buff the skill effects have been improved but the performance of the tier 4 skill of black Bolt will remain the same as before as a result okay we'll see about that the occasional issue of being affected by time freezing for a certain period of time when finishing the shadow monster summon pattern at the same time as the time limit in war boss legend gore has been fixed okay that's good the issue of the repeat count being wrongly displayed when auto repeating multiverse invasion in certain situation has been fixed yeah i've seen that quite a few times in the past couple weeks the issue of the vibration alert not being sent when clearing story stages separately has been fixed haven't noticed that one the issue of the text the application has not been installed being displayed for some applications when using the shear feature via devices with android os 11 or above even if the application is installed has been fixed i don't know about that one the occasional issue of being affected by time freezing for a certain period of time when being attacked by ultron okay so ultron was doing the same thing as gore the issue of autoplay plus feature being turned on again when restart the battle after turning autoplay plus feature off in alliance battle extreme mode has been fixed okay i didn't notice that one that wasn't happening to me but okay the issue of certain uniforms not being displayed in order when a range has been fixed the occasional issue of the skill icon disappearing during battle has been fixed yep that one's been a problem first time that happened to me was back in the summer with iceman so hopefully that's the end of that the issue of alliance battle lobby screen not being displayed properly in certain situation has been fixed the issue of the realized potential button guide section being wrongly displayed in the realized potential guide section has been fixed the issue of heroes moving awkwardly in some story stages has been fixed i didn't notice that one the issue of the total score slash damage being displayed wrongly when exceeding a certain number in co-op content has been fixed i guess that's those guys that are at the top of the leaderboard that has negative 10 million points or some shit like that okay the issue of the red sign being displayed even when the tier 4 skill cannot be used has been fixed i don't know about that one the issue of the information of unhoned heroes of the target agent being shown on the friends recommended screen has been fixed please change the hero information manually if the issue has already occurred okay so that's pretty much everything for the patch notes i know you guys are going to be wondering what the hell is going on why is there no black panther black panther if he's coming will more than likely be in the mid month patch along with shuri's black panther outfit and possibly some type of transcendence or tier three for umbaku 
honestly, if Neymar will leave this character at tier two for another like two plus years, that has to be one of the dumbest decisions they could possibly make.